Michael, you identify yourself? Yeah, Michael Australian Campaign for Liberty and Liberty Coalition. Uh, where can we find out more about this agreement, specifically, Ed, your perspectives on this? Uh, I work with the Identity Project. Our website is at paperspleased.org, and three or four entries down in the blog is a long white paper analyzing the draft of the PNR agreement, which is only a subset, but basically, I think, raises all of the same fundamental issues as the umbrella agreement. I would just add that actually the, the letter that was referenced earlier uh, that was sent by a number of organizations uh, to uh, President Obama and the Congress, which will give you a fair amount of background. Uh, it, the easiest way to go, again, is go to the Center for Democracy and uh, uh, Digital Democracy, Center for Digital Democracy's website. It's, it's right, I know it's right there, probably on some of the other organizations, the ACLU signed on, uh, EFF signed on, I believe, so there are other organizations like that. Um, Stephanie Perrin, University of Toronto. Um, very interesting, thank you. Uh, I'm interested in what's going on in Europe with respect to the discussion of the directive in the context of law enforcement. Now, I understand this is basically starting and that this will be a longer discussion. Um, has Eurojust tabled a paper, said anything, made a comment on the coverage with respect to the directive? Eurojust. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't seen anything from Eurojust on this, but um, I mean, we have we have now uh, two ongoing processes, which is uh, the revision of our own uh, data protection framework of the old directive, old 1995. A directive and uh, uh, also uh, setting up a uh, um, horizontal framework. This means that data this data protection framework will be applicable for the private and the public sector, uh, of course with some different rules, but generally the same principles will apply. And the second thing is the uh, EU-US data protection agreement on law enforcement. And we have several uh, uh, debates uh, going on, but uh, and our institutions, of course, also the agencies, are contributing to the process uh, of the revision uh, towards the European Commission. And perhaps Frank can uh, follow up with some background to this. But otherwise, there will be the draft legislative uh, proposal uh, on this revision in autumn. Okay. Question over here. Pamela Jones Harbor, Fulbright, and Jaworski, former uh, Federal Trade Commissioner. Uh, I was wondering if uh, those on the panel could address the e cookie directive. I know in mid May, the Article 29 Working Party had an opinion on, uh, on, on this, and it became law last month. But the way it was reported here, it is a bit hazy uh, in, in with respect to how it will be enforced. And what effect it will have on American companies doing business in Europe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm not really familiar with this either, but as I understand, it's about um, giving uh, consumers, uh, in, uh, internet users, uh, the possibility of an informed choice uh, if they want to have cookies uh, planted on their computers or not, and, and uh, strengthening the rules uh, in Europe uh, on that compared to um, what has been happening so far. So um, I think, as has been said before, implementation uh, has been a challenge in Europe, uh, and this has been recognized, and uh, the intention is to address this in the reform of the Privacy Directive to make it at the same time more streamlined, more user-friendly, more, more easy to implement, but then also make sure the implementation actually takes place. I would nevertheless um, uh, put a bit of a question mark on Edward Hasbrook's remarks that uh, nothing is implemented and, and is, is completely ignored. Um, I mean, I repeatedly um, see these um, reactions from, from companies, including big companies, um, when they get simple letters from our data protection authorities. They, they just get a letter of inquiry, but we have heard you're doing this and that. And they seem to get fairly nervous about this. So if um, this was all a tiger without teeth, I think then um, we wouldn't have those uh, reactions and, and, um, and, and this, this nervousness. 
Um, this being said, I think uh, we, we have to be better on the uh, implementation side. This is where we can probably learn a few lessons also from uh, best practices in some parts of the US, uh, including in the administration. Um, uh, I think here on the US side, uh, we have to um, perhaps look a bit more closely at principles and across the board protection. I didn't really reply to your question, I know, but... <laughs> one one follow-up question. Uh, it was also reported here that even though the rules are in effect, companies will have a year to get their houses in order and what they should be doing, it was reported, is assessing uh, their uh, privacy policies in-house and start thinking about how they would comply. That's what we heard they should be doing now. Is, is that an accurate uh, articulation of uh, complying? Um. I hope you still have my card, otherwise I give it to you again. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll forward that question to my colleagues in Brussels, what the exact um, state of the play at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If, if I may share just my own experience by way of perspective on you know, how good the situation is when you appeal. Uh, my last several trips to Europe, I've asked the airlines, all European airlines, uh, for my PNR data and what they've done with it. Um, all have argued strenuously, uh, none of them have provided it until after I've complained to the data protection authorities. All of them have argued strenuously with the data protection authorities that they aren't required to provide it. One ultimately uh, just said, you know, the data protection authority gave up and the airline said, you want to do anything, you got to sue us. One data protection authority never answered me at all. And only in one case, which uh, was the uh, German Data Protection Authority for uh, North Rhine-Westphalia, just yesterday I got my PNR data from Lufthansa because they had ordered Lufthansa to turn it over a year after my flight, a year after my original request, and only after I got the Data Protection Authority involved. Two out of three cases I got nowhere. So sometimes it works it's better than nothing, but it's not what it's supposed to be. Okay, so seeing no other uh, persons at the, uh, at the microphones, I think we'll wrap up. I just want to get uh, the remaining panelists here an opportunity to say uh, anything in conclusion you'd like to say. Anyone want to add anything? No? No? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, I can just uh, try to, to explain. Of course, we, we were talking now on the public uh, data process, uh, processing and the question how to uh, share data for law enforcement. I, I just think that we need to have uh, uh, a stronger data protection framework on both sides of the Atlantic, a common framework. I mean, the globalization, the digitalization forces us uh, to, to have common rules because otherwise at the moment we are revising our European framework. But uh, at the end, the enforcement problem will stay because, of course, the internet, at least, uh, in the private sector, will not end up uh, at, the, at the European borders. And in addition, uh, as we are all fans of the Arab Revolution and the open internet, uh, we will not uh, just do censorship at, at our borders if uh, data protection rules are not in compliance. Yeah? So we need to uh, have common rules. We need to come up with transatlantic data protection framework. And therefore, we need also data protection uh, activists and privacy groups being active on both sides of the Atlantic. And I can just thank you for this panel. Uh, and uh, thank you, Barry, uh, to, to organize this, because it's very important to, uh, to get in contact with uh, each other. And it's very important to, to build up alliances uh, across the Atlantic. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jan, for taking part in this. Thank all the panelists, and, and uh, uh, I'll again convey all our thanks to, to Mary Ellen Callahan. So we're going to wrap up. Uh, I know at least Jan, and I suspect Edward, uh, uh, if you can nod in a sense if you, this is correct, uh, will be uh, uh, be staying behind uh, on, the, on the podium for a little bit uh, during the coffee break. Uh, if you want to ask additional questions, we particularly ask. Uh, that if you are a member of press uh, and you'd like to ask a question, uh, that you come up and just identify yourself so we can make sure uh, that you have an opportunity to ask your question. So thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>